Hi YouTube, I recently put all my monster sculpts on display at Hazelmere Museum. If you didn't get a chance to go and actually see them, this is a virtual kind of walkthrough tour just to show you roughly what it looked like. So this is the room that I hired. It's quite a decent size and you can see all the main monsters on the other side of the room there. We'll come to those in a bit. This is the Ewok village that I made with the kids over one holiday break. All the little Ewoks in there. Then this is my pizza creature on the left. I made him to look like a whole load of bits of pizza and he's got lots of little weapons and things. I put him in a blister pack and it looked quite good. So you can check out separate videos of these. This is Can I Play With Madness by Iron Maiden and Derek Riggs, the artist from Iron Maiden, actually ended up putting that on his uh, Facebook page. So that was pretty cool. These are my attempts at Fiji mermaids made with a replica monkey skull and then some real pheasant legs and things like that. This giant sea louse was made with loads of parts of spider crab molts. So lots of carapace parts and lots of legs all paper mache together. This was an old broken VW Beetle that got a car boot sale and then I kind of mad maxed it up, put loads of parts on it and just painted it to look all rusty. Then we've got this kind of alien seed pod thing I made at the back, just using a lot of cotton wool buds. Next we have an ET that I'm making, but I'm halfway through this. Still quite a long way to go. Um, so I just put a sign on the wall that said ET work in progress. Um, he still needs his eyes and outer skin. Next I thought it would be a good idea just to put some photos on the wall, just to show my main sculpting process. So here, step one, wire armature. So I quite often just take some aluminium wire, twist it around to make an armature. Step two, cover with aluminium foil. Just really squash it to get the main shape. Step three, starting to sculpt with milliput. Um, milliput is a two-part putty. Step four, look, carrying on with the sculpting with the milliput. Um, they sponsor this channel very kindly and send me free milliput occasionally. Then these are the painting stages. So painting the creature dark to start with and then dry brushing all of the lighter highlight colours over the top. This is a weird sculpture that I made years ago just using parts of skulls that I'd found and a sheep spine and sort of a rusted metal circular base thing. Just stuck it all together and painted it a flat grey colour which really kind of brings out the shape of it. Next we have my version of Audrey 2, the plant from Little Shop of Horrors. It's not supposed to look exactly like the original, it's just my take on it. Next we have Stripe, my life-size gremlin. This is probably the sculpt that's taken me the longest to do. It's got lots of texture and scale detail in that one. Next we've got Split Face from The Thing, mainly made with paper mache. Next we've got this dragon that I've made in Milliput. I painted in grey at one point, which I think I actually preferred. I'd like to give him wings one day as well. Then we have Chet from Weird Science, paper mache again with milliput details and then all airbrushed. This is an alien puppet that I designed and his eyes go side to side and his ears go up and down using brake cables from a bike. This was a blonde doll's head that I bought from a car boot sale and then I had great fun mutating it and turning it into this hideous creature. Next we have my larger than life size alien face hugger. This was a really great fun one to sculpt and it's ended up looking really creepy and I'm really pleased with it. Okay, then we've got my Rancor monster from Return of the Jedi. This again, lots of paper mache work and then just milliput for all the details. Slimer's one of my most recent sculpts and he's so vividly coloured that he really stands out in this exhibition. He almost looks like he's glowing. This is a weird little cyborg monster that I've made. So he's got a cool brain and loads of intestines all wired together. Next we have Harry the Bigfoot from Harry and the Hendersons. I really wanted to make the whole of him but I think my wife would have killed me because he would have ended up being about 9 foot tall. This is the monster from the movie The Deadly Spawn. It's probably my favourite shaped movie monster of all time. Next we have an alien egg embryo that I made up. This is just made using a child's egg chair that somebody had thrown out. Most of my smaller sculpts have ended up in these cabinets, mostly to protect them from children. So we've got an alien insect on the left, and then this little monster that I made on the right. Lots of fake teeth in this one. Then on the next shelf down we have my many-eyed monster. 
Uh, this one, I'm really pleased with the overall colour that I ended up painting him. He's got a real character. And then this is my little goblin. He's got a real glass eye. Then we move down to my pet swamp monster. <laughs> he's quite cool. It's got a little no trespassing sign at the top there. And then he's chained up to that uh, stick. He's pretty grotesque. Then we have my old man of the woods. All of the ivy and all the other plants and grasses and toadstools and things ended up taking me longer than the actual man did to make. Moving down to the bottom shelf of this cabinet, we've got my devilish imp. I was quite pleased with the colours of this one, blue and red, it's quite unusual. And he's pretty creepy looking as well. Little Otik is from a very unusual movie about a baby which is made of tree roots. Um, you can see at the back there as well I've got a little egg embryo, a little mini one. That I've started to make but it's a work in progress. In the next cabinet I've made all the ghoulies so you've got the back ghoulie at the top there and then at the front on the left you've got the rat ghoulie, the fish ghoulies in the middle there the bright green one, cat ghoulie at the back and then at the front there you've got the uh, toad ghoulie. Um, I had real good fun making these and they're really particularly creepy little characters. These are the sorts of movies that I like the most. It's the ones with like little tiny weird creatures in. Um, so next we'll move down to Critters. This is one with lots and lots of teeth and it took a long time to put all those rows of teeth in there. Um, we've got a Critter egg next to it as well that I made. Um, again with Milliput and then just painted up to look all nice and brightly coloured. On the next shelf down we have all the mutants from the Basket Case Trilogy. These are probably the weirdest mutants you'll ever see in any movies, like, ever, basically. There's a great range. They weren't all in the first movie, but they're in the second and the third one. If you haven't seen any of the Basket Case Trilogy, it's basically about a conjoined twin who was removed at birth. He's like a little evil twin, and he lives in this basket. Here he is, he's called Belial. On the next shelf down we have the alien from Terrorvision. He's a really friendly, cute looking little alien, I think. I mean, he's quite big in the movie, but I just think he's got a real character. Then at the back we've got the Aylmer from the film Brain Damage. He grows out of the side of somebody's neck, basically, and he's quite creepy. And then we've got the Minion from The Gate. Um, there are lots of these little minions and they all run about all over the place. They're only about a foot tall or something, but because there's lots of them, they're really creepy. Okay, on the top shelf of the next cabinet, we've got all the life cycle stages um, from Stranger Things. So you've got the little tadpole stages here of uh, Dart the tadpole, and then he grows legs, and then he gets uh, he turns into this form which is a bit more like a dog. It's called a demodog. And then finally you've got the last stage of the life cycle, the Demogorgon, with all the little teeth. A uh, real hideous looking thing. On the next shelf down we've got a robot that I built, which was really inspired by Johnny Five from Short Circuit. I mean it's not supposed to be a replica of him, it was just inspired by him. Next we have Ludo from Labyrinth. Um, he's a great character, but he also means something extra to me because I visited the Museum of Moving Image in London when I was younger and I got to see the actual Ludo. On the next shelf down we have a Garthim from The Dark Crystal. I would like to make all the other characters from The Dark Crystal at some point as well, but the Garthim is particularly creepy. Then we've got a Sprite from the Sprite advert. Um, you may not remember that, it was quite a few years back now. Uh, then Mac from Mac and Me, a real silly film, uh, but quite a cute little character. And then we've got the Graboid from Tremors, um, one of my favourite films, Tremors, and I love it. And I will be making the uh, walking version of the Graboid at some point as well. Moving to the next cabinet, we've got an alien from Men in Black. This is the little one that lives inside of the person's head. Next we've got another recent sculpt that I've done which is Yoda from Return of the Jedi, the first movie that I ever saw at the cinema. And then we've got Dr. Finkelstein from A Nightmare Before Christmas, probably my favourite character from that movie. You can see the pale blue top of his head there, and then if you look at the back here you can see his brain. 
On the next shelf we have Norris from The Thing, probably one of the best scenes of any horror movie ever where it's all just bursting out of him. I also made the mini spider head from The Thing as well. I would quite like to make a larger version of this at some point if I get time. This next one is based on a Games Workshop Warhammer Orc. I was really pleased with this and I was extra specially pleased because the paint job worked really well. Um, these next two are inspired by Games Workshop but I made them up. This is the smallest one in the exhibition, he's only a few centimetres high. On the next shelf we have this kind of skeleton, undead looking guy. And then at the back there we've got a little puppet thing that I made out of Hessian. At the front here we've got a shrunken head. And that was made using actually my own dreadlocks that I used to have. Uh, and then we've got this bit of tree bark with teeth added to it just to make it particularly creepy. And then this guy is my little pygmy and I might add some hair to him at some point. This last shelf is all full of creatures that are made by a process called kit bashing. Which is basically where you take a whole load of existing plastic animals and little creatures or dinosaurs and that kind of thing. Cut them all up, cut all their heads off, all their limbs off. Uh, and then join them all back together in a different order and just paint them all up, add extra bits and pieces here and there and make your own creatures from just what would have been rubbish or just old kids toys. As you can probably imagine I have a massive list of creatures that I still want to make and I'm steadily working through them. Each creature that I make, I'll do a step-by-step -step video and put it on YouTube so you guys can see the making process for each one. Um, so make sure you hit subscribe to check those out in the future. And also I'd like to thank Hazelmere Museum for letting me have this exhibition. And I'd like to thank Milliput for sponsoring this channel and for sending me free Milliput from time to time. It really helps with me uh, making all of these creatures. Um, get yourself some milliput as well, give it a try. It's a two part putty and it hardens, sets rock hard in about four hours at room temperature. And it just means that your sculpts will last forever afterwards. It doesn't break down, you know, like latex or something like that. It just lasts forever. Check out my other content if you get a chance. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.